My 3D printer's broken. Let's fix it. So here's the deal. I was in the middle of printing this very big thing, which is the wing of an RC airplane, which I understand might not show up real great on account of it being clear, but I guess you can kind of see it. You can kind of see the detail in there. Anyway, it has to print in, in stages. This is a cool piece as well. You can kind of see it prints with the, the internal structure. Anyway, that's not the important part. The important thing is this stopped working. Uh, there's a little sensor here, right? Yeah, there it is. This little sensor uh, detects magnets in the bed to kind of do an auto bed leveling thing. And if I were to jiggle this wiring harness, which goes into the back of this extruder, the light on top of that would flicker. Out of the way, jerk filament. You're in my light. Here's a rear view. It's this cable right there. Goes into that sensor, into this box of mystery down in here. I emailed the company. They said, yeah, it's probably this thing. Uh, we'll send you one. And here it is, a new one. They're very helpful. It was, it was free under warranty. Uh, this, this came as an assembled thing. Uh, they were pretty nice to deal with. They shipped it right out. Uh, you know, they said in the thing, this comes with a warranty. And uh, it said in a, just a couple places mentioned the warranty. And I couldn't find a single place that mentioned how long the warranty was. Or what all it covered. Obviously it covered my problem and it's long enough. I've had it for maybe half a year. So I can't complain. Step one, remove the old one. There's a lot of zip ties. Kind of wish it wasn't all zip ties because now I can't, like, I cut the zip tie to get it off and I can't reattach the zip tie. I gotta get new zip ties. So, gonna be super careful. Anyway, yeah, they seem like a pretty good company to deal with. And uh, they're not a sponsor, obviously, so they don't have any sponsors. According to the slip that, the shipping slip that came with, uh, the cost of the part was 1.99 some currency that I did not understand because it was not a dollar. Hmm, how is that in there? And you know, it's pretty fortunate that this part came in now because I wasn't even going to have a video this week. I was going to have a very different kind of video this week. Looks like you're going to see that maybe in a couple days. Too chilly to do any paint. I'm completely out of welding wire. Didn't have any more copper fittings. It was uh, dark and rainy when I get home, so I can't melt anything. Open up. Okay. One of these is that sensor. But you know what they say. It's a poor craftsman who blames his tools, even if they are out of the expendables and broken. I mean, a true master welder can weld without welding wire, right? I mean, I'm sure someone on the internet is going to claim they're good enough to do that. Okay. I've isolated the wire. That part's good. Whoop. I'm going to spotlight on this. This was zip tied very tightly over there. And I know that's to prevent it from the motions and stuff, from, from the movements, from fatiguing the wire, because it's going to move all over crap. But that's really quite kinked quite aggressively by the zip tie there. Uh, and this was a pre-built one. This was, I did not build this from a kit. I'm not blaming them, but if it's right there, I'm kind of blaming them. I shouldn't blame them. They sent me a free part under warranty. And right, now I think we take these ones off. By the way, I should probably mention, this is not an instructional video on how to change a pin to probe sensor. Although I guess by the end I'll either have it done and you'll see how to do it or you'll see how not to do it. And I'll be ordering a new one of these printers. I did not build this, so just kind of winging it here. All right, okay, okay, that's giving me a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit more. I could pull the, the probe sensor wire out quite easily right now, but I don't want to do that until I know I can put the new one in without damaging it. It's always a catch. Let's see, it goes above the bar, below that uh, belt, and that just goes kind of under there. There we go, just screwed it down a bit so I could get that out. Now in this giant nightmarish cluster of wires, which I understand does not show up on camera, there is a little push tab release. Wow, that came off real easy. Some of you might know I'm a repairman in real life. Not fixing 3D printers, but let's just say there's a lot of these plugs on a lot of circuit boards and none of them come off that easy usually. Let's see, under between these two bundles of wires, under the belt above the bar, and there we go. And I apologize, there just is not a great way to record this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I tried threading this up. Well, this 
hits this strain relief here and stops that. So I threw it all the way down, took the screws out, slid this out sideways. So I'm going to have to install the new one in reverse order of that. But I'm guessing I'm going to find in this sharp bend a problem. Okay, new one in reverse order. And you know when I'm done with this, I'm going to tear into that old one, see if I can find the break. Tracking down broken wires is something I have to do at work sometimes, and it sucks, let me tell you. Especially because the wire can be broken inside the insulation, and there's really no way to see. Even worse, often the uh, wire will test okay, but then you jiggle it and it doesn't. But how do you hold all the meter stuff and jiggle the wire and do all that constantly? It is, it is not fun. It is no bueno. Okay, and I'm going to thread this up, being careful not to twist the uh, wire. Because I don't want to give this wire any reason to stop working. Alright, that's about where it was. There are procedures to adjust this. Worry about that once I get the bulk of it just kind of back in a position. Wait, yeah, needs to have like a loop in it. That way it doesn't come off the, the probe and then do a 90 degree bend. Because that's just going to cause problems. Generally, wires are kind of like your spine. Flexible, but you don't want to flex too much or you're going to break something. You know, gentle stretching is fine for your spine. Uh, 90 degree kinks, not fine. And if you ruin your spine, you're kind of screwed. Wires, by the way, cannot go to a chiropractor. There. Maybe, maybe that's correct. The wiring looks right, but the height, I'll, I'll worry about that later. I have an uncle who's a chiropractor. His forearms look bigger than most people's thighs. I don't know so much if he's just really good at fixing things or really intimidating, and people are afraid he's going to tear their heads off. So... He says, there, is that better? Uh -huh, it's better, please don't hurt me. I joke, he's really quite good. In fact, him and one of my other uncles, who were both in the bodybuilding, they once were visiting my parents when they were younger. And they thought, oh, wouldn't it be fun if we played a little practical joke on our sister, my mother. And uh, they woke up early before my mom went to work. They snuck out into the garage, and one on the front of my mom's car and the other on the back of my mom's car, these are old cars, like steel bumpers stuck on the end of the frame of the car, you know. They grabbed it and picked it up. You know, it's kind of like a squat lift thing. And then they walked it, jimmied it over, right so the driver's door is right against the wall. And then they set it down so she couldn't get in, couldn't back out. And then they left. They're then not, they left. They went back to the, the bedrooms, went back to sleep, and then waited for their prank to be discovered. My mom woke up, got ready for work, went out to the garage to notice... She's stuck. She is completely stuck. And then much yelling happens. Move my car back. What is wrong with you people? I mean, obviously she knew what was wrong with them. They were all related. She was very, very well versed in exactly what is wrong with her family members. That was a pretty small car. I think it was a Mercury LN7 or something. Very small, very gutless. I mean, even a lightweight car is not going to be easy for a guy to pick up. But there were two of them. Two people, it's fine. And I don't think either one of them ruined their spines. It's weird. That was another, that's another uncle. Now this is kind of a cool way to, to manage the wires. This allows them to stay kind of crunched together, but it doesn't clamp them. Uh, it also allows them to be flexible. Very nice. Okay, let's see. Okay, loop through the thing. See this wire? This zip tie will need to be replaced. With another one in factory location. A couple here will have to be replaced, and one here will have to be replaced. Four zip ties. think that's good. Move this over. I'll test it in a minute. But let's see what's wrong with this thing. See, it appears to be three small wires inside one big thingy. Figuring it's here, this tight, crimpy part. So if I can just cut this off. I mean, this is the old one. Who cares? Should just throw it in the garbage, but eh, I'm curious. This is what I get for not having my normal work tools around. Gotta improvise with shop tools, and my garage tools are ones I had to pay for. So of course they're cheap Harbor Freight stuff. Screw you, insulation! I'll show you to protect wires. That's a decent kink in that one. What I'm doing right now is I'm pulling on the wire. The theory is, if the wire is broke inside the insulation, the insulation will stretch and pop. If the wire is solid inside the insulation, it will not want to uh, stretch. Because even a tiny bit of copper wire is still surprisingly tough. Now this method of checking is not advisable in the least. However, 
this part doesn't work. It's broken. It's going in the garbage. So I just felt like chopping into it. Why not? Boop, there's a break. Black wire broken, leading to a uh, thing not working. Not too far from where the, the thing was. The, what's the word? Zip tie. I'm forgetting words. It's late and I'm tired. Give me a break. Get off my back. I'm not losing my mind. You're losing your mind. Shut up. Broken wire. Or I just broke it right now. You know, I'm, I'm somewhat delirious from lack of sleep. There we, there we go. Part, part gone. New replacement part on the printer. Let's go set it up and calibrate, see what happens. Coming up on the calibration point where it always failed. Fingers crossed. Seems to be working though. Now if the paper moves, you panic and mash this button as many times as you can to make it stop and not ruin your, uh, your print bed. It isn't ruining it yet. Hooray, it didn't ruin it. Okay, get lost, piece of paper. It's going back and forth like it's indecisive. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Well, there you go. It's fixed and it's calibrating. And I'm going to try some prints over the next few days and maybe they won't suck. So uh, that'll be fun.